Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here, reporting from self-quarantine. I hope you're having a safe one indoors as well. We've got some Apple news and leaks, something to take your mind off of everything that's going on, absolutely unreal. But we've got the iPhone 9 Plus, which has now been confirmed to exist by 9to5Mac, a lot of iPhone 12 Pro news, and some exclusive iOS 14 leaks. Let's kick this off with the iPhone 9 Plus. 9to5Mac has made yet another discovery in the leaked iOS 14 development build. They found evidence, an identifier, towards a larger 5.5 inch budget iPhone. They're calling it tentatively the iPhone 9 Plus. Now we knew that Apple would be refreshing the 4.7 inch, essentially the iPhone 8, but with modern internals. But now it appears that Apple might be releasing alongside it a larger version, the iPhone 9 Plus totally makes sense replacing the 8 and 8 plus which are the entry level models and for many people the more expensive models are out of reach yet some of the features that come on the newer phones you can't get on the 8 and 8 plus such as express transit support and to 5 mac does confirm yes it will still have touch id in the home button so solid state home button it'll still have the same power button same form factor overall just newer internals inside they're going to be including the apple a13 chip as well as three gigabytes of RAM. They also claim it'll be getting stereo sound video recording, a feature first seen on the iPhone XS series. Also express transit support. So people with an older iPhone 6 or 6S could not get this, but if you wanna keep the same form factor, you now have an option. And John from Front Page Tech confirms that Apple has launched the iPhone 9 production. So that's currently in process in the midst of all of this chaos. I think that that had a huge impact on the release schedule. And at this point, Apple's just screw it, let's do it, let's build it as he says so the iphone 9 we could be seeing that fairly soon maybe at wwdc john also says that could happen on june 1st that's a tentative date which can be changed but june 1st sounds really good also something i was a little confused about here so we heard about an upcoming iphone se3 from ming chi kuo with touch id embedded in the power button using a patent that apple has had for several years now this is apparently not that device that's happening in 2021 and the hyundai analyst group also had that device in mind so it's very likely that this is just a quick iphone 8 plus refresh and not the rumored 6.1 inch with touch ID and the power button. John's also saying that Apple's supply chain is improving. The turnaround time for getting your device repaired or replacement parts is getting better. And a subtle hint letting you know just how bad it is for Apple, they've enacted a limit for how many Apple products you can buy from the stores. For example, the iPad Pros, you can only get two on the online store iPhones 5. And as a whole, the smartphone market is down 38% from last February of 2019. This virus has been disastrous to the smartphone industry. Moving on to the iPhone 12 Pro news. Starting with an article by 9to5Mac in which in the iOS 14 development build, they found evidence that Apple will be including the 3D time of flight system, likely with LiDAR in the upcoming iPhone 12 Pro model. So just two of the new iPhones will be getting this system. It's now been confirmed from within iOS 14 that that's true. And they've confirmed the iPhones will keep their existing camera system and gain an additional sensor. So it won't be just an ultra wide and a wide like on the new iPad Pros, it'll keep the telephoto as well. Now that means that our concept is likely wrong based on the massive time of flight and LiDAR sensor in the new iPad Pros. I personally was stunned here. I thought Apple would do something cute like that ring flash taken from an earlier iPhone 11 Pro prototype. That's not the case. They're going all out as big as it can get and we've revised our concept according to that. It's not symmetrical. So I'm a little confused here how Apple would do this. Hopefully we learn about what they're doing here in the next few months. Take a look, let me know what you think. It's the best we could do given what we know now. Now it's really hard to say why the time of flight sensor is so big on the iPad Pro. It's possible that Apple could shrink it, bringing it over to the iPhone, but that doesn't seem like Apple. They'd want the same system working on all the products, you know, to make it synchronous across the entire line. And looking inside of it, when Apple did give us a peek, it appears that there's two separate sensors, a LiDAR and a time of flight, maybe laser bouncer. We don't know for sure until iFixit does the teardown, but it's a huge and complex system. Apple has been working on this for over two years. So when it does come to the iPhone, it'll be refined, already tested on the iPad, and I don't know how they'd implement it. Our concept shows an even design, somewhat even. If you have any ideas about the best way, possible way to do it, leave them down below. I'm genuinely curious. This is one thing that I'm dying to see in September. Now, Chinese display maker BOE is preparing an organic LED display for the 5.4 inch iPhone. 
quick reminder, all 2020 iPhones will be organic LED display equipped. This is regarding the fall lineup. And by the way, the 5.4 inch iPhone is the one I'm most excited for. So I've been actually had quite a little journey, started on the Ultra, went to the Z Flip, then went to the S20 Plus, and now I'm on the standard S20, just because it's the most comfortable. It's the smallest one, the battery life is not great, but I can't imagine a 5.4 inch all display iPhone, that would be something. And the one I'm actually looking forward to the most, of course, besides the 6.7 inch. And an absolutely crazy report on Apple's upcoming A14 chip, which will be shipping in this year's iPhone. So an article written by Research Snipers goes into detail and says this year's iPhone clock speed on the Apple A14 will exceed 3.1 gigahertz. Who knew we would see those speeds on a smartphone? Absolutely crazy. Currently the fastest core on the Apple A13 is 2.7 gigahertz. So Apple is making a huge leap when entering the five nanometer world. And the theoretical Geekbench score for single core is 1658, up 25% from the Apple A13, and 4612 for multi-core, which is 33% higher than the Apple A13. Those are huge gains. Also some good news regarding the release. Bloomberg still believes Apple is on track to launch the iPhone 12 in the fall. And this is mostly in part because production doesn't begin until May. If we get to May and then Apple still hasn't sorted their production issues, then we're in trouble. A separate analyst group from Wedbush believes we'll be seeing no 5G iPhone lineup this year at all. So it's possible that Apple just cancels the iPhone 12 and that's it. Pack it up boys, we're going home. Now it appears the new 2020 iPad Pro with the Apple A12Z processor has been benchmarked in Antutu and the results, not what I expected. Almost identical to the 2018 with the Apple A12X. The difference in GPU is 8%. That's because it has an additional core, eight core GPU. So don't get the new iPad Pro just on power alone. Now the good news is Apple made six gigabytes of RAM standard across the board on the new iPad Pro, regardless of which storage size you get. Previously it was only available on the one terabyte option and they included the new U1 ultra wideband chip in the upcoming iPad. I mean, they have to for the AR stuff and the upcoming Apple AirTags, but that's something they did not show in the news release. Now apparently history repeats itself. We just got iPad Ford with this release, where Apple drops a quick refresh and then delivers the actual changes they wanted at the end of the year in another iPad refresh. Digitimes is reporting that a new iPad Pro with 5G capability and a mini LED panel is coming at the end of this year. Adding on to this report, John of Front Page Tech says 5G iPad Pros are coming end of this year and they will have the A14X processor that we heard so much about in the leaks. Apparently this explains why there's confusion. Apple is doing two iPad Pro launches in 2020. And just to give you a scope of how powerful the Apple A14X could be, the new MacBook Air is almost twice as fast, well 67% faster than the old gen, but it still pales in comparison to the iPad Pro 2018 version with the Apple A12X. So this quick benchmark here shows you it's actually insane how much power Apple can get out of a mobile processor. Also, what's up with the fact that the new MacBook Air doesn't support Wi-Fi 6 or the MacBook Pro from earlier, no Wi-Fi 6. It's why I didn't get one. The new iPads support it, but why not the latest MacBooks? Doesn't make sense. And new AirPods are still happening. Digitimes reports that Apple is still working on forthcoming AirPods, but the release schedule is all screwy now because of the outbreak. We may still see them at WWDC or with the fall iPhones. And let's finish this off with iOS 14 leaks with a few exclusives of my own. Now, 9to5Mac reports that CarPlay in iOS 14 will be gaining wallpapers, which will be adjustable depending on the time of day. It looks like a modified version of the iOS 13 wallpapers. Pretty cool. And Maps is getting smarter, in particular for Apple stores. So selecting an Apple store in the Maps app will actually let you know if that one in particular does same day repairs, same day replacements, and if they have any appointments open, all from within your Maps app. You'll be able to tell if that store is an Apple authorized service provider, and Apple Maps will now highlight places that have seating for couples and for children. And a few exclusives from Max Weinbach. So in iOS 14, you'll get a new control center toggle for do not disturb sleep mode, 
which you can toggle from your Apple Watch or iPhone. Also in iMessage, message reactions will be optional now. You'll be able to turn them off or on and hide alerts from them. And Max Weinbeck says, iOS 14 will let you have extensionless watch apps, further removing reliance on the iPhone with watchOS 7. He also confirms that white balance on third-party light bulbs will change depending on time of day and location. So essentially, night shift is coming to your HomeKit accessories. And you'll be able to classify faces in HomeKit for sorting. One last thing that I thought was funny, Luca Tedesco has jailbroken the T2 chip inside of recent Macs within the last few years. I thought that was funny seeing verbose boot running on the touch bar. I love that the jailbreak scene is flourishing lately. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.